Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 27. So today we're going to be talking about a bass killer. Now we've already covered, you know, a lot of the things that ruin performance in the bass region, like your subs are out of phase. A lot of people suffer from that because they don't know how to align their subs. So we've got subs out of alignment. Last episode went over main to sub integration where they're not in phase at the crossover point. That's another way you could be losing performance in that region. So today we're going to be going over something called S B I R. Now that stands for speaker boundary interference. And of course, you know, you, you can kind of get what it's talking about just by the name boundary interference. And this happens because we have walls in a room. This is not something that happens out in the field, but it happens, you know, all the issues we really have in the motor region are because speakers are playing these frequencies in a room. That's what causes the room modes that we have to deal with. And that's another, you know, bass sucker or, you know, something that we need to pay really close attention to. Our seats have to be properly placed. Our subs have to be properly placed. You know, we've gone over that too in past episodes. So the only thing really left is this speaker boundary interference. Okay, so what is speaker boundary interference? Well, basically, we have a boundary and we have reflections off of that boundary in the modal region. Now, remember, when you're in the modal region, you know, you get in the lower frequencies, you're no longer directional, which is why we don't treat them like we do, you know, the upper frequencies where the sound is more directional and we know where they're, you know, those, those uh, mirror points on the walls or reflection points, you know, the modal region, we're not treating them like that. They're more omnidirectional. So that the sound is actually, the frequencies are wrapping behind the speaker and that's where the problem lies because they're not just all being directed forward so let's say we have a wall here and here's our floor and here's our speaker okay and our speaker's got little subs or not subs woofers in it and here's the compression driver so these drivers here that's what's going to be producing the modal frequencies now you know the modal frequencies in a, a regular room are going to be 350 300 hertz and down somewhere around there is where you're going to start transitioning from the upper frequencies that are directional and you'll start transitioning over to modal frequencies now we call this point the schroeder point or the schroeder frequency you know where that transition happens standard size room you can kind of ballpark it. it's going to be 3 350 hertz so we've, we've already gone over in the bookshelf versus tower episode how to determine or how to, you know, look at what drivers are producing what, you know, in relation to, you know, a lot of times woofers are producing vocals, so we have to get those positioned right. Things that a lot of people don't think about, we covered in that episode. But anyway, so those drivers are producing that modal frequency. And what's happening is they're not only going forward, let's use a different color for these. All right. So we've got the modal frequencies being pushed out forward from by the drivers to the listening area. But because they're omnidirectional, you know, they're also going to the sides and they're also going to this back wall. Let's use green for the back wall. So we have it bouncing off of this back wall and this is also coming forward. And here is where the problem is. All right, so what happens is we have our sound that's being pushed forward from the speaker itself and it's radiating like this going through its cycle but then we also have some of that sound going behind the speaker because remember it's omnidirectional so it's coming like this bouncing off of that wall and doing this so if you notice here we have a peak and here we have a low you know what that's doing it's kind of like noise canceling headphones where it can cancel out the sound. That's what happens because it's actually producing the sound, you know, uh, out of phase. So that's what we get right here. And so whatever the distance is from this wall to this baffle, you're going to have a cancellation at one quarter of that frequency. Okay, so let's say that the distance from the wall to the front of the baffle, or you know, where the sound's being produced, let's say the quarter of the frequency is three and a half feet. Now I know that off the top of my head because I know a 80 hertz cycle is 14 feet. You know, so a quarter of that is going to be three and a half feet. So if we are three and a half feet away right here, 
we're going to have a null at 80 hertz. Now three and a half feet from the wall, most people, they're gonna be closer. Let's go ahead and look at six inch increments off of this wall right here and kind of look at the different frequencies where we're gonna have these SBIR issues. So I'm gonna do a little magic trick here. I'm gonna snap my fingers and they're gonna appear on the board because I can't remember them. So I'm gonna to have to write them down magically. So here we go. All right, so there we are. Now I've run these calculations through a calculator and this is what we're gonna have at different distances. So six inches off of this wall. Now, of course, most speakers are gonna to be too deep to get the baffle six inches from the wall. So let's say you've got an on-wall speaker or something you know, very thin or not very deep, and you can push it against that wall, you're gonna get your SBIR null or your quarter null down to 557 hertz. Now, something very important about these higher frequencies, if you remember we went over the absorption panels, and we went over the Bob Gold's, you know, that compilation website that I showed y'all. And I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description so y'all can find it if you need to. But uh, Owens Corning, like say 703, it's gonna easily, you know, at a two inch panel, it's gonna easily absorb that. Because at two inches, it's about a 0.86 or roughly absorbing 86% of what hits it at 250 hertz. Now at 125 hertz, it's no good. So 250 is about, you know, we don't wanna have to make it or try to absorb anything really lower than that with, you know, 703 at two inches thick. All right, so let's move our speaker baffle out to 12 inches from the wall. Now we're at 278. So we're getting to where we can still use a two inch panel to absorb that. And so, you know, when we absorb that, we're killing this red line right here. So that's gonna stop it from, you know, we're not gonna have that null or that dip at either whatever frequency we have here. So we're basically fixing the SBIR off of that front wall. Let's move out to 18 inches. Now we're probably getting more realistic to where, you know, a lot of you actually have your speakers set from the front wall. Now this is 185 Hertz. So, you know, sometimes we see people put absorption on the front wall. One problem is they don't really understand why they're putting it there. They think they're doing it treating reflections. That's not a first reflection point. And another thing is a lot of times they'll have the panel up here. Here's purple, let's put a little panel on the wall. You know, we'll see panels up here. The drivers that are producing these frequencies are not up there, they're down here. So the panels are way too high. The panels need to be directly behind the, what's producing the frequency we're trying to attack. So. 18 inches, we're at 185. The two inch panel is not going to cut it. Well, when I say not cut it, it's going to be kind of borderline. At, point, at 250, it's what, 0.86? So, I mean, at here at 185, you know, maybe we're at 0.6, point, you know, something like that. It's going to help a little bit, but it's not going to really attack it well enough to where it makes it disappear. So we're gonna have to really step up to like a four inch panel and this is at 18 inches off the wall. The four inch panel of 703 is 0.84 at 125 Hertz. So 125 Hertz, we're 0.84. So you could put a four inch panel. You know, of course we don't wanna stick it up there. No man's land too high. We want that panel right here. So that panel, a four inch panel of 703 would fix that issue 18 inches off the wall. Now let's move out to 24 inches. Now, you know, if you've got speakers that are 18 inches deep, which, you know, that's not uncommon, you may be 24 inches off of that front wall. You're at 139 hertz. Again, with the 703, that was 0.84 at 125 hertz. You're probably absorbing 90% of it. So it will work okay. You know, it would do pretty good, actually, at 24 inches. Now, beyond that, you know, you're moving to thicker panels. And, you know, we know that, uh, if you get to three and a half feet, you're going, that's an 80 hertz wave, 80 hertz. I mean, you're gonna have to be extremely thick to absorb that. Now this is just gonna be the strongest SBIR you're gonna have. You know, you're also gonna have one off the rear wall, which is why it's advisable to put thick insulation, you know, right behind your seats, not the entire back wall. We went over that in how to treat your room. But, you know, I didn't wanna get into it. I did mention SBIR, I believe in that video. But this is why we're treating heavily on the back wall, because you're also gonna have a reflection coming off the back wall, meeting up with the direct sound as well. And it's gonna be the same thing. At a quarter wave, or the quarter distance off of that back wall, you're gonna also have a problem. So, that's just another reason why it's important to treat the room properly.
But it's also another good reason to have the rear wall, you know, not sit on the back wall. If you can sit further away from it, you're pushing that SBIR frequency down into the subs and you don't have to worry about it, which is another reason why THX chose 80 hertz. You know, we, we talk about other reasons, but that's a good one why we want to sit at least three and a half to four feet off of that back wall at a minimum because then we're pushing the SBIR frequency down below 80 hertz because remember three and a half feet is 80 hertz so you know if we're sitting five feet I mean I have to run the, the calculator but probably around 50 hertz would be where that nulls at so you know we're crossing to our subs by then so we've also avoided the SBIR on the back wall and if your subs are up front and maybe you have an SBIR issue at you know 90 hertz or 80 hertz and it's coming off of this front wall and you can't absorb it there's no other way to fix it you can just cross your subs up above 80 hertz that's another reason to have a higher crossover point point. and remember if our subs are up front we don't have to really worry about being localized as much because you know sure once we get above 80 hertz you can start hearing where the the base is coming from but if the subs are located up front it's not going to be an issue now if you've got subs other places in the room behind you it could become an issue but it's going to be much better to kind of live with it and you know you probably won't even notice it it's not like it's you know 100 hertz it's not going to be like oh there's the sub you know like sticking out like a sore thumb you know it's going to be worth it really to try that out if it can fix an issue like this that you can't fix with acoustic panels All right, so that's really it for this episode, and this episode is going to lead to the next one. And there is a way to completely avoid all this where you have no SBIR coming from the front wall at all. I think the next episode that we're going to do is really going to blow some people's minds because it's going to really squash a myth that's out there. But you're going to have to wait till the next episode before you find out what that is. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit that notification bell so you know when the next episodes come out so you don't miss that one and other videos like it. Sorry guys, I'll see y'all next time.